Okay, we're standing here in a, in a crop of Spring Isle Seed Rape in North Wexford. Um, it's uh, certainly doing well. It's, it must have been planted early because it's uh, virtually at the point of finished flowering. Some of the, the stems here, and that's a main stem, yeah, the, there's no more flowers left on them, so they're, they're finished at this point, whereas a few of the, the later branches just have a wee bit of flowering going on. Don't know whether we can pick that up there or not. Oh, you just a flying away. Just a, a bit of a, a, a weevil I spoke about, weevil standing in winter rape, and there was the weevil coming in, just investigating what's going on. One of the worries that we would have in a crop of rape that's still flowering, spring rape that's still flowering, is pollen beetle, but certainly where I'm standing, I don't see any signs of pollen beetle. And uh, as, as always in the definition of agricultural problems, a problem is something that you don't have to look for. But nonetheless, they're there if you can possibly find them on that. See them on, on the back of that um, flower there? We can pick them up. They're gone in under the sepals there as well. There was a few of them in it. They're, again, they're flying. So there, there's a few, but certainly that couple that I've seen would not constitute a problem. As I was about to say, I'd kind of always viewed the definition of a problem as something you don't have to look for. So. In, in that regard, I would think that it's a, it's a particular pest that we won't be talking about any more this year, certainly in a crop like this. So again, we have our, our stems here. Uh, just looking at the leaves, petals falling, lower leaves dying out because of lack of light, which is exactly the natural order of things. The leaves along by the tram lines are still green because they get more light than the ones in the canopy. As I was looking in earlier, um, we can see lots of the, uh, the petals falling, and this is where the whole sclerotinia issue starts. Petals fall, the disease gets a chance to infect the leaf with the help of the presence of the petal, and it goes on from, from there. It grows and develops then after that. One of the things that just caught my eye when I looked in here was this particular white-type symptom here on the leaf which would look to be leaf miner. Um, yeah, you can see a little bit more of it on the back. A leaf miner, probably easier seen on this particular leaf that I pulled off. A leaf miner is a little maggot that goes in, burrows into the skin, and then m feeds in the area between the two skins, between the epidermis upper and the, and the lower epidermis. Feeds away in there until he's finished feeding, then stops, falls out in the ground, turns into a pupae, and it will eventually turn into a fly again at some point. So that's what he's been doing and you can generally show that just by opening the, the surface off the leaf just like I'm doing. Where the leaf is healthy I couldn't do that. Where it has been eaten underneath it just peels off because the two layers have been separated. And if you can just see it there's the leaf miner himself, the little maggot, just trying to get away from me going for cover. If you can just see him wriggling along there on the surface of the leaf at the moment. So that's the fellow that's doing the harm. It's relatively common, um, generally not kind of worth getting too fussed about. A feeding maggot, he'll feed in there and then, as I say, he'll drop out and turn into a fly. There could be more than one in an area that's as big as that. Uh, I can't imagine it. And there is, there's a second fella just gone in underneath and I've just leave him, left him a hole to fall through. But if, in the event that he doesn't fall through, there's both of them. And I would say even there's probably more than that again if I skin off some more of that area, particularly when I cross into the other side, because generally they, they won't have bored through the, the, the stem area of the stem. So that's, that's just what's doing that just for, for people just to be conscious of it. Um, leaf borers can also be found in other crops. You'll find them in cereals and other crops. So they're not, they're not in any way exclusive to what might happen in oilseed rape. Uh, other than that, just take a quick look. I'm just going to grab a, a stem back in here in the canopy somewhere just to take a look at it. Um, so there's a stem and, and instantly I find the very same thing that we commented on in the other field. We have our early flowers and our first pods, big long pods full of seeds and then the latter ones, but they're all there. All the pods are present. They may or, these latter ones, they may or may not fully fertilise and develop, particularly these ones up here, because we don't want this crop to keep flowering forever. But, you know, a month ago, up here, or sorry, that area of the plant was actually down here. 
and all of those pods were sitting here as a little bunch of flowers. Bit by bit then as they flower, the centre keeps growing up and it keeps growing up and, and it leaves the, fer the fertilised pods behind and eventually you kind of end up back with this at the top. These ones probably will fertilise, you pull away the pods, there's the little the little uh, developing pod which is f initially it's just the ovary but that's what, what, what where the pod is and you can get the same thing in any of these uh, if I didn't pull the whole thing off. You pull away the petals and there's the pod beneath. It, it, it has been fertilised but perhaps it could still be aborted because it's relatively late and the plant itself knows that if it keeps pods flowering forever it'll there's a danger that these ones will have matured before these ones are full and ripe. So that's just the natural order of growth. If I just slice open one of these, um, in here we will find seeds at this stage because I can feel them in the pod, but they will be completely green when I get them open and they'll be basically full of water if I was to squeeze them because they're only at the point of being filled. So you can see those kind of white little seeds there uh, predominantly full of juices and sugars at this stage, very little solids in them, but that'll come in time. If you keep pumping in the juices, the solids are being laid down, and as the solids are being laid down, then that's building your yield potential as you go. So good big pods, lots of seeds, hopefully good potential from this crop as well. And generally, you know, no problems in here. Um, crop was healthy. If I just pull out this leaf for a second, just pulled off a lower leaf, you can see it's covered in, in, in petals, which will always happen. But it was pretty much free of disease, not 100% sure what this thing here is, uh, but it looks like whatever it was could have happened because of pods or, or, or pollen being left on it. Um, it. It may be a disease, but down here on a leaf at the bottom of the plant, it's not going to matter at this stage. That leaf is dying anyway because it just doesn't have the penetration of light into the canopy to keep it fed and alive. So all in all, I think people could look forward to a good outcome from that crop as well, hopefully.